thank you again for offering us this interview. I really appreciate it. Oh, no, anytime. All right. So, oh, thank you. Thank you. So I want to just ask you a quick question. Um, we know about, you know, where you are right now and even your struggles with making the band and everything. Who was Dawn Richard as a child? Were you quiet, shy, aggressive, outgoing? Like, tell me a little bit about your childhood and your personality then. I was like an outgoing introvert, you know what I mean? That, that, that makes any sense. Like, I got along with kids and I talked a lot of kids, but I never really had a lot of friends. I was always kind of awkward, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I, I could handle my own with kids and have a good time, but I only normally would have like one or, one or two friends. Like, I never, like, it was hard. I never really got along with girls. Uh-huh. I was always kind of the guy girl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? And, yeah. uh, I just, that was kind of, that was kind of where I was, you know, mm-hmm. it was never, you know, but I was like a punk, I was, I loved rock music, you know, I kind of did my own, I always, mar- I marched it on my own music, my own drum, I was mm-hmm. kind of that kind of kid. Right, as you do now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, as a kid though, did you always have aspirations of doing, you know, music when you grew up, or did you dream of doing something else? Um, I was, I think, I love music, but my family always told me, that I wasn't gonna be there was no like money in it. So I would mm-hmm. always know that that was just a hot that was something that was gonna you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, be in the forefront. So education was always first. So I that was what was most important. So most of the time I was music and doing and you know, I was playing sports. I was I was gonna go to the Olympics for softball. Oh wow. I was really good yeah, I was really good at softball. I really loved it and it was really dope. You learn something every day. Didn't even know you played softball. You played in college, I'm assuming. Say again? I said you played in college. I was supposed to play in college, but my father said I had to decide. He had, I had to decide because I was playing. Um, see, my, my schools weren't as good as, as, as I wanted them to be, so I would play park ball because the parks would have um, national teams. Like, mm-hmm. They did have like all-star teams, and that was the teams that I played on. But I would get bruised up so bad. My dad told me when I went to college, I had to decide. Oh. <laughs> and so I decided I decided to uh, tone it down and not go for softball and, and to, to focus on my music. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Learn, that's that's really interesting. I had no idea. I'm not saying that I didn't think you were possibly athletic, but you're so musically inclined. It's usually is one or the other that I often find. So that's great that you have yeah, that balance. Yeah, I was, I was, like, really good in, in, in everything. I have, like, a bas- I have ringing basketball. Oh, wow. I, I got, yeah, a championship when I went to St. Mary's Academy, which was an all-girls school, and we were a really good basketball team. I play sports like crazy. Like, volleyball, everything you can think of. I played, and I always was a part of, like, an off that team. Like, sports was my thing, mm-hmm. actually. Like, me and my brother, my parents would go to every game, and I would, like, I would I would cheer. Mm-hmm. I was on the cheerleading squad. So I would cheer. I would cheer for the, 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 for the boys' game. Mm-hmm. I would go play basketball because the girls' games would always be... The, the, um, the, 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 the girls' games would always be before the boys' game. Uh-huh. So I would play, and then I would go downstairs and get dressed in the locker room in my cheerleading outfit and then go cheer for the boys. Wow. That was high school for me, yeah. That was a long day, I'm assuming. <laughs> well, no, it was normal. It was normal. I did it all through high school. Wow. So I know you were talking about your dad telling you to make these decisions. I know you grew up, you know, fortunately with both of your parents, your mom and your dad, and I see that you guys have a strong bond, you know, as a family. So would you say you were more like your mom or your dad, and how so? Um, I was a lot like my father growing up. Uh, my mom is very, you know, you know my mom. My mom's out there. She's, she's, like, <laughs> she's a character. I was more like my father. I was real quiet. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm more observant than anything. Uh, and my mom knew that. That's why her and I always fought. Always. Oh, really? Always, always. Hilarious, yeah. But I think that's because we were the same person, but in a different way. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I had an opinion. If she said yellow, I claimed blue because I knew that in my in my world, blue could exist. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That was kind of the kid I was. Wow. And you, and then your dad, I know he also was in a group. It was chocolate milk, correct? Yeah. Right. So he was in a group. And so what was that like growing up with a dad? You liked music. You had this passion for music, and you had a dad that was a lead singer in a in a group. How did that help you build who you are as an artist today? Oh, my father shaped everything. He let me know, he let me know, like, he 
he put me in my, like, he just let me know everything. There was no sugar coating. Mm -hmm. There was no, like, he let me know exactly what what it was going to be about, how hard it was going to be. And that's why I loved him. He, he supported every part of it. That is really good. That's, I mean, that's great. Your daddy's girl, and you got your father there, and he's helping you along with everything you're doing now as well, correct? Okay. I said your dad is helping you along with everything that you're doing now as well. I'm sure that helps you, you know, to keep your your balance in your industry and in your personal life as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. He's just been a kind of a foundation for me. He's super smart. He knows. I wish he could manage me. You know, I would want him to manage me. If he wasn't teaching, I'd drag him from school and <laughs> make him manage me. You know. Right. So when are you guys gonna um, waiting for a little Natalie and Nat King Cole duet? When is that gonna happen? Oh, we've done that. I did that in high school. I'm waiting. I'm waiting to see something now. I mean, I know your uh, dad plays the piano and everything, so give us what we want. They, <laughs> I would love to do it again. I think it'll come soon. My dream is for us to perform in the Oscars together, for him to play. Oh, I mean, beautiful. at the Oscars, the Grammy. Right. For him to play while I sing. Yeah. That is beautiful. I will, I'm looking forward to that. I know I am. The, yeah. Um, I know, like, everybody knows, you know, you guys were affected by um, Hurricane Katrina. You guys moved, you relocated to Baltimore. And I know that some people might saw that as, you know, a major tragedy. But in what ways was that a blessing in disguise for you? Like, what, what did you learn from that that became positive in your life? I mean, we can't, we, I mean, at, at the end of the day, for us, it showed us how tight our family needed to be. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It brought, our, it brought our family close and we realized not to take it for granted. We all lived together. Like, my grandmother was, like, like down the street from me, like, growing up. Mm -hmm. And so to have her down the street and then not able to have a Thanksgiving with her for four years right. um, was a drastic change, you know, and it just taught, it taught us to be a little bit more understanding, you know what I mean, about everything and more appreciative of family. And it was a blessing in disguise because it brought our family closer. Right. And what what was the moment in life that you feel defined you as a woman? Like I said, rough. You know, I mean, I know you've been through a lot, but like, what was it? Was you know, was it something you went through in the industry? Was it a, a personal interaction with a person? Was it a family loss or you know, or gain for that matter? What was it you feel made you a woman? Everybody, every woman has that story that you know tells them that that's who they are, what they're meant to do. What do you think at this point in your life? has been that moment? I think the moment I walked out of Puff's office and that asked him to let me go from the label, mm -hmm. that was such a big, that was a big moment for me. And, and, it, and it, I, like, I, it, in more ways than one, I think that was my training point as a woman that I took, I took my career into my own hands and asked for independence. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. That was, that was, that, that was a big moment for me. That was um, big one for you and a lot of your fans as well. I mean, I remember reading that, and I, th I think you did an interview I saw with Bossup. I had read online and saw online that um, you made that move, and it was just like, wow. That took a lot, you know what I mean, to come from two major platinum selling groups and to just say, this is what I'm going to do, and you had that support. That was great. Yeah, that was a turning point for me. You know, I just really was proud of myself as a woman because a lot of people too hard for women to stand up mm -hmm. to not only just you know in, in society in this industry but to someone as big as her. Right. You know, like and especially, especially with the rap, the rep that he had, you just you never know. You know, and I was so confident in myself, and I walked out of that office so proud of myself. I needed that moment, you know. Right. So you talked about Puff, you know, I was going to touch on it. Um, I was a huge making the band fan in general, and then Danity came, um, got together, had the albums, made shows to them and everything, cried when you guys broke up. And then, you know, I just was like, what's going to happen from here? What was your, can you just share some highs and lows of being in the group with, you know, the girls of Danity Kane and what you learned from that? Um, I don't, there weren't any lows. I mean, it, it was like being, you know, being with girls is, is all over the place. There aren't lows. That's just called being with girls. You right. know, that's, <laughs> you know, like, mm -hmm. so they were all great. They were fantastic. Like, I, I, I remember performing on stage with them, like, moments when we fell out, when we <laughs> fell on stage, like, moments when we got drunk and got in a fight. Like, all that shit is fantastic. Like, that was great moments. And, you know, even when we broke up, like, it was a horrible moment, but it was a moment that defined, you know, the, the woman that we are now. And 
and they weren't horrible. They were just things that taught us about life. And mm-hmm. I love that. I love that about us and our experience. I wouldn't change that. Mm-hmm. You know, they were all great moments, our learning lessons. Right. And, and what about with the um, dirty money, like how that came to be and then how you guys kind of did everything that you did and then, you know, you went on in your own way. How did that, what were the highs and lows of being in the group with another woman and, you know, and Diddy, of course. That was such a, um, oh my God, that was such a random way of happening. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I never would have thought I would have been in a group of us, let alone, you know what I mean, touring with him and he was my boss. So that was just a weird transition. Um, I think the high of that was doing something as innovative as we did. It was such an innovative um, an album, and to be a part of that was incredible. Mm-hmm. You know, right. um, I, I, I don't, I don't like I said the lows. I don't, I don't look at things as highs and lows. I look at them as needed because they happen. Okay. Um, but it was never a low. You know, I mean, I think I would have wanted us not to record for three years. You know what I mean? And put out our <laughs> album a bit earlier because I felt like we were on to something. Mm-hmm. Other than that, you know, it it, it, it it was great. Like, those experiences were fantastic. Like, how could you not want to be a part of such experiences like those? I agree. And then... I, like to me, you were like the golden child. You you not only made the band, you know that was a big accomplishment in itself. You I remember you coming up with the name for Danny the King, you have Danny the King comics and everything. And then you had, um, you know, you're the only one that was left. And then you were with Dirty Money. And then you were one of the few people to successfully, you know, just go from bad boy and still make something great of yourself. Continue to do the great things you were doing. What's, what's your secret? What is it that pushes you to keep pushing on no matter what's going on, no matter what group you're in, and still shine? And, like, in, in my opinion, sometimes outshine the people that are with you in those situations. Like, what, what pushes you? What gets you to that point where you're going to still come out on top each and every time? What's your secret? Man, to God, like, I, I just can't fail. Failure is not an option. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just not an option. And I, I, I just, I, I'm, and every time I look at that, and every time I push, I realize that, you know, I, I'm fighting for something. I'm fighting for people who, who, who are, are like me. You know, I don't look at things as a, as a, um, as a, as a negative. I look at how I can make them a positive. Uh-huh. And that's always been the way that I've been. So, like, uh, you know, if someone tells me, no, that just makes me go harder. You know, it's always mm-hmm. been that way and it'll never change. It just will never change. Okay, that's good. So, taking all of that, like, where's Dawn going to be in the next, let's do one year. Where are you going to be in about a year? Where do you see yourself? Um, I see myself happy. I, you know, I, 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 my idea of success is very different than the world, so I don't, I don't, I don't know if y'all see it that way, you know, but for me, mm-hmm. I see myself happily doing what I love to do and hopefully changing a couple of lives along the way, you know, with mm-hmm. my music. That's happiness for me, being able to do what I love every day and touching people. And hopefully at the end of all of this, people will say that I did something to change the game of music, mm-hmm. you know, and that's all I ever really wanted. Okay, so this, this true love, I'm talking about happiness, does true love exist for Dawn? And if it does, what does it look like? <laughs> does true love exist for Dawn? It looks like me smiling. That's it. Okay. Like, I'm easy. Like, true love exists, it does exist because God exists. Okay. And I think that's that's his... That's his that's as great as it's ever going to be. I know that it is just because God God loves me. I'm still here. And um, I look at it that way. You know, I, I'm a loving person. So if I can love you the way I do, then I know it exists because I, 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 I'm doing it, you know? Mm-hmm. And I know you do a lot of, um, you talk to a lot of younger girls. I know you're familiar with Taylor Robinson. You talk to her often. You mentor her, and I think that's beautiful. How do you, how else do you give back to the people who are either coming up in the I industry? I never give back enough. That's how I feel. I feel like I always can do more, you know, and I do the best way I can. I do it the best way I can, you know, I try my hardest to, to you know, I, I never wanted to be a role model or anything like that. I just kind of live my life the way I do and hopefully, you know, hopefully people get it and, 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 and it's great and it's fine, but it just so happens that I think a lot of people are in the same world and the predicament that, I, that I'm in and so mm-hmm. we relate to each other and I just do my best to, not give advice, but to be there, to be okay. a, a ear, and, and hopefully through my music, give some inspiration and some hope. That's that's all I can do. Mm-hmm. But it's never enough. You know what I mean? It'll never be enough because that's just the way I am. I'm always going to want to reach for more mm-hmm. and to help more. 
do you ever see yourself having like your own artist and label and everything and just you know being the head I mean, honcho? Yeah, that would be great. That would be great, and and, and then hopefully that'll happen. You know. Mm -hmm. So before you... I, I can't predict it, but I would love to, to to cater to an artist and and help them through through the situations that I've been through. That would be great. So before you go, we just got to play a quick game. It's the word association All game. Right. It's the word association game. I'm going to give you a couple things. And just whatever comes to your mind first when you hear that word, I just want you to share that with us, okay? Okay. I'm going to start small. How about music? Love. Okay. Pain. <sighs> Needed. Bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> Laughter? Okay. Come <laughs> <laughs> on, man. Bad boy. Um, an experience. Experience? An experience. Okay. How about New Orleans? Home. Golden Heart? My life story. Okay. Danity Kane. The start. Dirty money. <laughs> the middle. Family. Foundation. Okay. And the industry. Uh, even for the weak hearted. Okay. Well, Dawn, I just want to tell you, I'm, I, as a fan and a friend, am very proud of your accomplishments. Saw you from the beginning, and you are one of the most persistent people I have ever met in a very long time. I'll just say that much. I've listened Thank to you very much. all Thank of your projects. You. All of them are great. And I think the thing that connects me the most with you is um, the way you tell your stories. It's more so... I can feel it. I hear it in your voice. I feel it when I'm listening to you. When I, I knew the songs you wrote without looking at the credits. <laughs> I remember it on um, Danny D. Kane's on the albums before. And it used to be a competition me and my sister would have to see, oh, that, is that Dawn or is that not? You know what I mean? Like, we would just know and feel it. It was a different connection each and every time. And then it carried over, as I said, in Dirty Money and with, you know, your solo projects and the a Telltale Heart, all of those things. I remember going to see a listening party and thinking about that as well. But... Just want to encourage you to keep up the good work. You're touching a lot of lives in a good way, and that's rare. So I appreciate you again you. for what you do and what you give us. Thank you so much. Thank you. No problem. So is there anything else you want to, you know, share, any upcoming things that you want to share with your fans or talk to us about that you feel is important? Yeah, I want to be with the, um, there's an app that's just available called the Golden Heart Experience on iTunes, and it's free, and you guys can download it, and you can get all the information for two days because I'll be touring this summer so Great. get that immediately thank you so much we appreciate it and we look forward to hearing from you once again thank you so much thank you dawn love you take care love you all right